Hello YouTube, I'm back again with the fake Fender Harrison Telecaster my friend bought and we're going to be doing a little bit of uh, upgrading on this for the bridge. Uh, I'm just going to pop this back on the bench, try not to break anything. Alright, so there's going to be a bit of uh, modification on this video, a couple of things about little technical bits to do with guitars. If, like many viewers, you have the attention span of a fucking gnat, then I will put a little link down there just so you can go to a sound demo. Be a couple of jump cuts in this one because I'm going to be looking at different bits of the guitar and you don't want to see the entire process, I'm sure. Um, but there's a few little things, a couple of developments with this guitar. Um, the seller has actually now seen my other video and they got back to my friend about it. And um, so the little bit of correspondence he sent me, he hasn't sent me the whole thing, but we got it there. So they said from the seller, hi, blah, blah, I saw the video. Firstly, I just want to say we use... The wood we use the woods are Chinese rosewood. This is for sure. Bullshit. No, I don't believe that actually. So I think that's a little bit. Don't start without bullshit. And next time we will change the rosewood. Well, why would you be changing it if it was already? Ro mm -hmm. Now I'm not too sure on that shit, you know. So I'm a bit okay. When it's finished, I will show you the pictures to see if you like it. But yeah, because he needs two of these apparently. About the hardware, I know it's not very good. But we sold the guitar in the low price. We can't put American hardware on the guitar. What do you think? And yeah, that's fair enough. Okay, whatever. So, you know, and thank you so much for your suggestion. This is really important for us. We have to improve all the guitars immediately. Um, well, immediately. Yeah, let's not take the piss out of these guys' English. This isn't actually bad for English. Um, please let us know if there's any information we can provide. Waiting for your reply. Thanks and sin sincerely. Blah, 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 blah. Fake Chinese guitar store. So, um, they did get back and they did seem to give a bit of a shit about it, although I'm still doubting the thing about the rosewood. Like I said, there's another guy who builds cabinets on the previous video. He commented and he said, look, I, I work with wood a lot. Um, that looks like ash or oak almost certainly. I would go with ash as well. So that kind of confirmed that I suspect it's an ash guitar because it's the most common one. But anyway, he got back again and mentioned that he's going to replace it, uh, the bridge and stuff anyway. And they actually got back and they came up with this. It says, hi, as we are new, we appreciate your reviews. How about we send a new bridge to you? A high quality Wilkinson with brass, and when you got it, you can change it by yourself. Is this okay for you? Um, to be honest, like I'll have to give them a little bit of credit there. I think the Rosewood thing's bullshit, but I do think the um, it's nice to them in a way to kind of actually give enough of a shit to go, well, we'll send you a new bridge with some saddles. Um, but he didn't need them. He turned around and he said, well, look, actually, I've already bought a Fender one, which we're going to look at in a bit. And they then said, oh, well, we'll give you a $30 refund. How does that sound? And he said, oh, it's nice of you. Thank you. Okay. So I'll give him a little bit of credit for that. They did give him a partial refund there. He didn't massively complain to them about it, I think. I think he just sent them this, my review, where it looks like I'm complaining. I don't give a shit. It's not my guitar. But, you know... Um, so at least they do have some commitment. I think it would be so much better if they just made you know, took these Fender logos and shit off and just made reasonably solid guitars. And, I'm, you know, surely it's no way to do business. But, you know, whatever. We all know what to expect now. <laughs> so, what we're going to be looking at today is the bridge, which we're going to be replacing. So, the big issue with this was these saddles weren't particularly good for the string spacing. That was the main one, actually. The plate seemed a bit cheap. And we just thought, look, let's just put a nice a nice bridge on, and we're going we're gonna to do that. So what he's bought here is a real Fender bridge. So we've got a proper Fender. Well, it's a bridge plate. And then from another part shop, UK-based part shop, we bought these compensated saddles. Um, in retrospect, it probably looked like we were doing a drug deal outside Nando's when he gave me these. Never mind, eh? So, we take these out. We're going to jump jump cut a little bit later when we have a, a proper look at them. But I will have a quick look at what these saddles do. Um, I'll just switch to camera number two. And I'm going to have to focus this a bit. So, if you just bear with me. Okay. Put this right in the centre because this is a right pain in the arse, this. Okay, that failed miserably. But anyway, you can sort of see there. That it's a slightly different shape. It's not totally round. You can see that, like, one side. So you can see that this end here, the strings are going to sit further back than on this end. Now, what that does is that compensates the scale length on the guitar. So if you put these in the right positions, 
certain strings like your E string it can often be sharp um, on the intonation it makes the scale length a little bit longer and um, allows you to do it with a six saddle sorry three saddle configuration because with six saddles you can do each one individually it's not a problem um, so what we're going to do first thing we need to look at is actually the scale length for the guitar because we need to make sure this bridge is actually in the right position uh, because the intonation did seem a bit out so even though people are going oh why didn't you just intonate it you know, because we're going to change the bridge anyway, and also because we're not 100% on the scale length yet. So anybody who doesn't know about scale length, quick thing. It's from this end of the bridge, from where the strings leave, not the bridge, the nut, down to here. Just where the strings meet that. And it's basically, effectively, the length of string where it is floating. Now these saddles make it longer or shorter, and the idea is that this fret, the 12th fret, is the exact halfway mark between where the strings meet the bridge and where the strings meet the nut. So what I'm going to do in a second is, we'll probably cut to it, is I'm going to uh, measure the scale length and we use a straight edge and we're going to see if the scale length actually com um, corresponds to this. So we'll be back with that in a second. Okay, so measuring the scale length for the guitar, I'll make this really quick. Your best tool for this is a nice long one meter or whatever straight edge which we've got and you kind of want to lay it like centered across this all the way centered to here so okay um what you want to want to measure first is the distance um make sure it's nice and straight from the nut to the 12th fret and in this case it is bang on 12.75 inches um we're not doing this in millimeters this time because I know a lot of American people tend to use people tend to use inches for scale length a lot of the time. So we'll go with the imperial measurements. So 12.75. Um, now that means that the double that at the bridge end should be 25.5, which is fine. That's a standard sort of scale length. Um, but you can see there 25.5 where my finger is. Um, these bridge these saddles have been pulled out quite far. So they are within the sort of travel area, but you are going to be looking at them kind of going over there. So in reality, this bridge could potentially be just a touch further back. Um, that's going to be an absolute ball ache of a job to do. So what we're going to do is, uh, because it's possible, we're going to just try and um, just take it straight out. It is within reason to get it intonated using this bridge. So we're going to see how we do. Um, but otherwise, like I did with my other bridge or my other shit Telecaster, I actually had to reposition the whole thing I think it was forwards a touch and then actually changed the the angle. But thankfully, this is looking pretty straight. So we're going to see how we do with that. All right, so let's remove this bad boy. For taking things off, you might as well use a good old electric screwdriver. It's a quicker job. Takes it straight out. He says, watch me thread some it now like an idiot. But these, yep, yeah, these come out the same. Because you obviously want to take the pickup out as well. All right, so we've got the bridge removed. Um, this is the old one. Here's the new Fender one, just for the tray for now. But the one thing you need to look at with these is whether, in fact, these two align with one another. So what you need to do is line these holes up. So you would line up the string through holes probably first, because that's already going right through the guitar. And if you look there, I don't know if you can see there very well, but these are not quite aligned. The string through holes seem fine, but these you can sort of see there, they're not. So what we're going to have to do now is a slightly bigger job, which is to, we need to fill in these holes. Then we need to mark out where this bridge needs to go exactly, and get it just secured in place. And then we need to re-drill those holes so that they're more secure in the correct position. Because otherwise, well that is random, probably my beard. Um, it's not going to work. So that's going to be a ball ache. Right, so one thing you need to do to plug these holes in. You need a little bit. I've got some bits of maple here that I had left over from a my other project, which was um, a Jazzmaster thing, but I had some spare bits of like little strips of maple wood. Now, normally for a scratch plate, some shit, you can just use a match. I mean, I've got like a giant match here, and you can just sort of like stab that shit in and just probably even just snap it off, but or just, well, kind of use some wire clippers maybe find a tiny bit and like that's fine it'll hold in because it's just a fucking scratch player but this is a bridge so at least any kind of thing that's fundamentally mechanical e-guitar right 
try and use a bit of hardwood because it'll hold in much better. You don't want your bridge springing off mid fucking gig. So what we're using with the maple now. It was square before, so I've sanded it down a bit with this thing just to make like a little block. Um, and now it just goes in and you can just ram it in there and then you can cut it off and, you know, very carefully if you need to sort of file it so it's flat. Um, but another thing you can do, um, generally you just super glue that shit in. You can use a little resin if you want, but I find super glue, gel one tends to be best, just works. Um, don't overuse the glue obviously one thing you can get though I'll try and get a little bit here is you get a lot of sawdust um, uh, it can be good to just kind of like drop a bit of it in there um, kind of just fill the hole in a bit and then once you do drop the glue in that tends to meld with it a little bit and you get a much better fit so you know if you've got a little bit of sawdust left over keep hold of that shit and just drop it in the gap and just push it in there and you find it fills it up reasonably quick you know occasionally you might find you need to take some out actually which is gonna be a bollock um but anyway so we're gonna we're gonna glue a bunch of these in i'll spare you the full details and we'll cut back to when we've um when we finish that so here's the job done um remember one important thing obviously when you're doing this job is probably the best thing to do is let a professional do it and not get your stupid mate who's got a few views on his youtube channel to do it and get fucking glue everywhere but other than that it's fine it's fine we're okay other than that these holes are fucking plugged nicely this pretty smooth so we can just stick the bridge on top so we're gonna have a look at that little bad boy next okay slight hiccup here um one thing to mention when you've got one of these bridges the fender style bridges and the cheap ass chinese bridges one big difference between these two is actually these holes that the thing goes through that your pickup is mounted on. So what you'll find is that you'll get these chunkier sort of screws that you get and you try to fit them through and oh no, it doesn't work. So one thing to mention is that one kind of just fits through but it's, it could thread it. Um, so as you have to actually turn them, you don't want to do that, it's not threaded for that. So what we get is you get a little diamond file like that and these are like you know four pounder set from boys i think i got these um and just file away until you lose the will to live um but yeah just widen it, widen it enough and then hopefully you'll be able to fit the pickup in so we'll be back when we've done that again right so the bridge is um affixed to the pickup but one thing that you need to do is now we've got these little holes you see they're slightly off it's a bit out of focus because i've had to switch to webcam because my phones die but the um these kind of holes are all lined up for the string through. So a little trick I'm going to do here is just, um, I've got some barbecue skewers. I'm just going to hoi them in the little gaps. And that should hold the bridge in place where it needs to be. Push them down a bit. And hopefully they should generally, without having to tape everything, just hold it there. So that's where it needs to be. Okay, one important thing to remember when you're drilling into a guitar is to use the correct tools for the job. And in this case, it's going to be a pillar drill or a radial drill, which will have a longer reach, I think it's throat is the word that they use, that can get out into the center of your guitar and can drill a hole directly down because you want it to be drilled straight. You want the correct size bit so that it was um, slightly smaller you want than the, you know, than the thread on the screws that you're using and you want to also be able to adjust it so that it will go to an accurate depth every time. But if like me, you're a cheap cunt, I want to use a 500 watt hammer drill, which is totally inappropriate. Sorry if I fuck your guitar up, Wakey. Piece of piss. God fucking damn it. Oh, fuck off. God damn. Well, at least it isn't going anywhere. All right, so bridge is fitted, saddles are on, new compensated brass ones. Let's see how it plays when we get it strung up. Should mention the strings he's given me are skinny top heavy bottom, which I use for playing some pretty heavy fucking metal. But it's what he wanted, so let's do it. And we're back. This is day number two because it was getting a little bit late. Um, but now we've got the strings on, we're going to be looking at, let's have a look these little chaps now the problem with these the entire bridge is actually the problem the whole thing i don't know if you can hear this and then 12th fret ignore the fret buzz for now 
But the problem is that this entire bridge is a little bit too far forward. And I've actually had that issue before with what otherwise I considered a good uh, Chinese guitar, uh, Revelation. I had to actually, but in that case, I could actually do something. Cause it was a six saddle bridge. It was a bit easier to do. I just took the springs off. So that's what I'm probably going to have to do with this because it's not going to be easily possible without major work, like rerouting extra space under there and re-drilling holes for the string through holes. Probably the simpler solution is literally just to take these springs off, fuck them, pull these back as far as we can get them and try and not over jig these. Let's have a look if you can see these screw holes. You can see the screws there. Maybe I should find some countersunk screws actually, but I don't know if I've got any. So they are going to need removing. Annoyingly, I've got the strings on. So what I'm going to have to try and do is possibly stick a capo at the end and pull them off. But I'm not going to bore you with all of that. I'm just going to rejig these saddles and then you're going to see the results. All right, we've got the mods done. Um, in case you're wondering why I keep changing outfits, it's because it's over several days. I'm not some kind of fucking mental diva who likes to just, you know, promote random mates' bands. Um, well, I do, but not for that reason. Uh, so anyway, yeah, um, we've got the saddles on. This is all good. They're working. We've took the springs off, but it doesn't seem to make a lot of difference. Tuners are still wank. But it's holding a little bit of tuning. But they're probably going to need replacing at some point. So we don't have any spares here. So whatever. But this is your, your sound review. For all you ADHD kids who couldn't be asked to watch the rest of my video. I've put a little link anyway. So you probably arrived roughly here. Bear in mind. I'm left handed. This is upside down. So I'm going to have to Hendrix this shit. So don't fucking judge me. I'm not prepared. Okay. Clean tones. This is it. <laughs> Uh, bridge pick up, tone up. Knees sucking. So all the, um, I like it with the tone rolled off a bit. So that's there, we've got, um, try a bit of this. This is neck pickle. Anyway, uh, yeah, pretty bad at that. So anyway, that's that. Um, I'll try a little bit of lead. Um, this is like distorted tones. Bridge pick up again. God, I'm bad at this. So, yeah, upside down, fuck off. Anyway, uh, yeah, the rhythm pickup. Try a bit more metallic, eh? Right?
that. So yeah, that's kind of it. Um, it's it's all right. It's 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 sounding a bit better now. I think the strings have settled in a bit. I still think the tuners probably need replacing. So I mean, in conclusion, I'd say you know like you end up probably paying about three hundred quid after you've modded a guitar like this into something playable. Um, if you want to get some ni nicer hardware on it or whatever, it's still a fucking gamble getting it from AliExpress. I mean, what this guy wanted was a very specific sort of aesthetic. He wanted a clone of a George Harrison, and admittedly, it would have been ludicrous to pay eight grand for one, um, or even like some of the it's quite hard to find uh, some of the, the the other ones that were cheaper, some Japanese ones that are lovely, but there were different spec. You know, he got what he wanted, I think, in terms of aesthetics, even if it is blatantly fake. Um, but yeah, like I say, it's a pretty average guitar. It does the job. Um, it's not worth getting Fender on the headstock. We're, going, we're not going to go over that again. Um, I don't endorse it anymore. Like I got it, got it, and regretted it. Uh, I'm probably going to take mine off. Um, so after we've had enough fucking discussions about that. But yeah, other than that, I mean, like I say, if you're going to get one of these things, try and find something that's from a reputable manufacturer that you already want i mean in my case it's harder because i'm left-handed so that was part of my reasoning for taking a massive risk on aliexpress um but anyway george harrison fake telly make of it what you will uh next week it'll be a bit more of a lo-fi video because they're going around the guy's house over up in um where i'm from and we're gonna have a look at his fake les paul so that's gonna be the big one we're gonna see how how that looks and uh stay tuned i'd like to hear your comments on things like that if you stop being a dickhead about them and, um, yeah, see you soon.